Hello and welcome to the Wednesday edition of The Box Seat. I'm Mark Warwood. Seven races at Ascot on Wednesday. We're expecting a partly cloudy day, 23 degrees Celsius. The track to be a good four and the rail, it will be at the 12 metre position. Race number one at Ascot on Wednesday will jump at 1.34. It is the Tab Touch Better Your Bet handicap over 1,200 metres. And in replay, let's go to Northern and the last start performance of Joy Rise who's one off the fence on the inside is Warbler. Joy Rise is coming down the outside and Warfish is under the whip trying to respond out wider on the track. Racing inside the 250. Express Time the Grey has raced up on the outside of Tibia Vara and they've come away now. Express Time just in front. Tibia Vara back to the inside but it's Express Time the Grey drawing clear from Tibia Vara near the line and Express Time too good and beat Tibia Vara. Warbler and Joy Rise. Joy Rise has been ridden off the speed both runs this preparation. William Pike and then Chris Parnham aboard in the replay race. The Pierce brothers have elected to book Jade McNaught here, the Premiership leader. Her, her claim is down to just the one and a half kilos now, but she's worth every gram of that. And I'd like to see Joy Rise go forward here. She's been in fast run races the last two times uh, behind Miss West Coast and Express Time. I think she mapped better here. She may well find the front and I think she will be hard to run down. Joy Rose goes on top. From number five, Hip Wiggle from the Morton Yard. Finished second at York last start, only beaten by that much. Was a beaten favourite that day at $2.40, but uh, we ran around in the gym crack last year, and he's certainly good enough to be winning a race in town. Number four, Warfish ran below market expectations in the replay race behind Express Time. Beaten nearly six lengths that day. Form behind Drink What You Like and Miss West Coast prior to that is certainly capable of winning on Wednesday and then number six silent act posted really fast sectionals on her debut back in June first up on a Wednesday for Bruce Watkins and Jason Whiting won a trial down at its home track at Bunbury top selection in race number one is number three joy rise to beat five hip wiggle four warfish and six silent act race number two at Ascot on Wednesday will jump at 214 it's the Ascot racing carnival maiden over 1,100 metres. We're going to Belmont and we're going to have a look at the trial of Zenays. Zenays, our three wide Granita girl has five lengths to find. Now battling on the inside, Winter is coming. Combat ready, the deepest. Then Lara Storm is last, but it's a battle of two here. Racing up on the outside, Zenays is really putting it to Russian Machine. They've distanced the rest. Granita girl, Winter is coming. And down the outside, Combat ready, but Zenays takes a marginal lead and Zenays pulls clear close home and wins by a length of a. Significant trial in the contest text of race number two because it featured not only Zenay's but also Russian Machine. I thought that Zenay certainly had the measure of Russian Machine in the trial. She performed really well on both of her starts last campaign, finishing third behind Don's Legacy and then second behind the really smart Sherpita. Like the trial, gets gate number seven here for Troy Turner who keeps the ride. I think Zenay's can break her maiden, or his maiden rather, on Wednesday. Goes on top from number seven, Angel Whisper had an elevated heart rate last time out. That was back in May. So forget that run. The run behind high range beaten just a couple of lengths on Anzac Day in April was certainly good enough to be featuring here. Number four, Russian Machine we've already mentioned. This is the debutant, the full brother of Fabagino who won the RS Crawford Stakes on Saturday and then number six Cristela also from the Tiana Robertson uh, yard although a newcomer to the stable appears to be the second string in this race here Peter Nucky elects to ride Russian Machine with Alan Kennedy riding Cristela. Top selection in race number two is number two Zenaes to beat seven Angel Whisper four Russian Machine and six Cristela. Race number three at Ascot on Wednesday will jump at 2.55 it's the Irish Day handicap over 1,200 metres, Irish Day on Saturday at Ascot Racecourse. In replay, we're going to have a look at the last start performance of Baron Bostock. Shook them off at the 275. Two lengths clear. Ebony Maggi and City Chan Gillespie. Nero Dio. Ebony Maggi comes at Zeebel. It's Zeebel with 150 to go, but Ebony Maggi collars it. It's Ebony Maggi Zeebel. Further back, Princess Zelda Friars Fantasia. Ebony Maggi, though, under vigorous riding, too good. And Ebony Maggi won from Zeebel. This is a Class 3 handicap on Wednesday. I think it's a very good Class 3. I'm going with number two. Baron Bostock. In the replay race he was eased in the concluding stages but he still managed to post the fastest splits all the way home in spite of that. You look at his performance behind uh, beating Essential Spice back in June in a class one when he carried the same weight as that horse. If he reproduced that he would win and uh, he's had a fair bit of uh, hard luck stories 
in recent times. Goes on top from number one, Nero Dio. Talk about hard luck. This horse lost the saddle last time out. That was also in the replay race won by Ebony Maggi. Prior to that, it won three in a row, and so you can't really knock the form. Last time out was a total forgive run. Number four, Jarman progress from winning a maiden to winning a handicap. The form out of those races is pretty good, particularly the maiden behind uh, when beating Sublime Image. And then number three, without reason, comes out of the WATC Derby last season. The format of that race is working out fantastically well, but there has to be a question mark about without reason over the 1,200 metres. Top selection in race number three is number two, Baron Bostock, to beat one Nero Dio, four Jarman, and three without reason. Race number four at Ascot on Wednesday will jump at 3.30. It's the Amelia Park Handicap. Over 1,200 metres. Let's have a look at the debut win of Tuscan Queen. 350 left to go. He opens up on Amelia's Contraire from Pure Dynamite. And they're about three lengths in front from Tuscan Queen called upon. And Mood Goddess. Pure Dynamite at the 200. Got the neck in front though from Amelia's Contraire. Here comes Tuscan Queen. Tuscan Queen going two to their one. Levels up. Grabs the lead. And Tuscan Queen goes home to score from Pure Dynamite. Last Wednesday we saw Windstorm put himself on the map regarding the three-year-old features during the Ascot Racing Carnival. I'm expecting Tuscan Queen in the same colours of Bob and Sandra Peters to do likewise on Wednesday. It won its uh, only race, that was at Belmont on the 18th of September. Really good sectionals late there and expecting it to go on with it here from the bottom of the weights. Goes on top. From number two, Colourful Chloe, who won in graduation grade two starts ago. So normally down in class, but does run into a potential stakes performer in Tuscan Queen. Number five, Grand Design, over raced in the lead last time out. That was at Bunbury when beaten by Black Ducati. Prior to that was only just touched off by Nero Dio and didn't have a great deal of luck in that race. And number four, Together We Dream. Surge late to win at York last start. That was first up, only beat Snibble by that much. That form is not strong enough to beat Tuscan Queen, but certainly figures in the minors here off a win in the provinces. Top selection in race number four is the exciting number 11, Tuscan Queen, to beat two colorful Chloe, five grand design and four together we dream.